love it. This morning, this morning my heart is open. Heart is open. My, spirit is my spirit is alive. My mind is alert. Mind is alert. And, I and I am ready to receive, to receive. from the word of God. And I declare, I am ready for change. And my life, now say with a finality, and my life will never, ever be the same again. Put your Bibles down in Jesus' name and give the Lord another shout. Make a joyful noise, the Lord, in this house. Somebody say amen. Look for two, three people who look like credible witnesses and tell them you are my witness as you give them a high five. Some of you need to move around and look for someone who's trustworthy. God bless you and let's be seated. Praise the name of the Lord. I say it again, praise be the name of the Lord. This is our year of the great overflow. I pray that this overflow shall not miss you this year. Yes. Tell your neighbor you have a choice. You have a what? You can choose to live a life of mediocrity. You can choose to live a life of overflow. Because that is the will of God for you. The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. But what does Jesus say? But I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. The King James says, have it abundantly. That is overflow. Somebody say amen. amen. So when we talk about overflow, don't think we're out of our minds. No, we have a prophet in this house. And we have a prophet over the house of deliverance church. Last year we were talking about the uncommon harvest. And many of you, thousands and thousands of you, experienced an uncommon harvest last year. Am I correct? How many of you can lift up your hand and testify and tell Bishop, I experienced some uncommon harvest in my life somewhere. Are you in this house? I'm giving you 30 seconds. Can you give your neighbor a testimony of one of your uncommon? Come on, don't look at me now. Talk to someone nearby. So you lifted up your hand. Can you testify to somebody and tell them this? Give them just a testimony of one of them. You have only 30 seconds. Testify to somebody. If nobody's talking to you, look for someone who's ready to talk to you. You have got 20 seconds. 15 seconds. Come on, talk to somebody. Don't look at me. 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now stop. Do you believe what they told you? Or they, you, they look like they made it up? Or they tell you some gibberish. They gave you a testimony. Come on, then rejoice together with them right now. Give the Lord a hand. Just rejoice together with them. Last year was the year we were trusting God for the uncommon harvest. Mavuno ya siyo ya kawaida. Wachele ya kawaida. Ya siyo ya nini? And this year we are trusting God for a great overflow. Somebody say amen. amen. We find our text in the book of Isaiah, chapter six, no, Psalm, chapter 65, and verse 11. That's where we found our reading. Let's read it together. What does it say? Remember, the, David is talking to God. What is he telling God? You crown the year with your bounty, and your cart overflow with abundance. One more time, declare, Father... Come on, you are talking to God the Father. Say, Father, Father you have chosen, chosen to crown, crown this, year this year with your bounty. With your bounty. And every cut coming from your presence meant for me is overflowing. Every wagon cut coming from heaven meant for you this year is not coming half full I'm talking to somebody here it's not coming half empty it's not just coming medium or large it's coming extra 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 
Someone is learning from here. It's coming extra large this year. Can we say amen? amen. And there are many wagon cuts coming from the Father meant for you this year. And all of them are coming while they are overflowing to the glory of God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. See, when you talk about wagon cuts, he's talking about a measure. And that's why in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 38, this is what Jesus declared. A good measure. Ah, what does it say? A good measure. And what is a good measure? Tell your neighbor it's not a spoon. Not a gorogoro. Not, look for a neighbor looks like a believer, not that one. Now tell your neighbor it's not a spoon. It's not a gorogoro. It's not a debe. Not a wheelbarrow. Not even a pickup. It's a 20 wheeler. Tell everybody that's a good measure. And when it's coming my way, read for me. What I just say, it shall be what? Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Tell them about that's overflow. Ephesians 3, verse 20. What does it say? Now unto him. Are you ready for this? Or should, should we close the service to come back next Sunday? You are ready for this? Ephesians 3, verse 20. What does he say? Now unto him who is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or ask. Tell them, but that is overflow. Give me that in the NKJV. What does it say? Who now to him, read for me, what does it say? Now to him who is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, this year, there is a power at work in my life that is going to bring stuff exceedingly, abundantly. Unazumza na gestures. Sini mekua mekupatia na fasi ya kuhama. Kama mekana na watu wako stiff, kama fani chawachana na wawo. You talk with gestures. How shall it come to you? Exceedingly, abundantly, above. Somebody say amen. amen. Beyond your imagination. Beyond what you are praying for. Beyond what you are asking for. That's how you shall receive this year. Because this year, lift up your finger and say, This year, 2016, is my year of the great overflow overflow is coming on your land also verse 12 even your land doesn't matter what it looks like verse 12 what does it say they yeah, yeah, thought we were reading together the grasslands of the desert what do they do what does that literally mean it means those of you who are farming in marginalized areas. Machakos, Kitui, Makueni, Mbere, Daraka. Talk to me. Kajiado, Narok. What is he saying? The grasslands of the desert, even this year, shall overflow. So much so that even the hills themselves shall be clothed with gladness. At this time of the year, I'm traveling over this country with our general overseer as we bless our pastors. We started with the Kitui, way, way, the harvest that is there this year. Then we went to Makueni. Then we came to Machakos. My brothers, my sister, the hills in Ukambani are overflowing with mangoes and maize this year because of this verse. Somebody say amen. amen. As we were coming from... Uh, uh, Makueni, we, went, we slept in Makueni. We went for breakfast. Who was waiting for us? The governor had, we were in town. He came to have breakfast with us. We spent an hour just talking and praying with him. And then we went to, to one of our churches in a place called Mukuyuni in Kaiti constituency. We left the tarmac and went about 25, 30 meters out. And we were wondering where are we going because there was maize and bananas and mangoes. And then we come to this beautiful opening where there is a beautiful, fantastic new church, deliverance church, built in the middle of nowhere. And we just stood there and said, wow, this pastor has done work. Our overseer was so blessed by these efforts. You know what he told him? The pastor of this church stand up, he stood up, and he says, do you know how to drive? The pastor says, no. He says, well, as soon as you get a license and you come to my office, I, I bought you a car. Yeah. 
overflow came to that pastor. I'm telling you, the, the overseer, the re region overseer got all of him. He says, tomorrow, I'm taking you to a driving school because he wants a <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. I've come to tell somebody, there's an overflow this year. Amen. If you're a part of this anointing, amen. this year you are going to be blessed. Amen. Even when you don't know how to drive as yet, God may surprise you with that. God will surprise you with a house when you don't even have a bed. So that you're just sleeping on the floor before your bed comes. Because when overflow comes, it comes from behind you and it overtakes you. Somebody say amen. amen. Isn't that what God says in Malachi chapter 10? He says, and see if I will not command a blessing that shall do what? Overtake take you i pray this year may the blessings of god overtake you he, i say may they overtake you it doesn't matter what they call you but this year you are experiencing an overflow somebody say amen verse 13 not only are you getting but what i read for me does it say the meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain until they do what? They shout for joy and sing. Somebody say amen. amen. Imagine the flock dancing and shouting for joy. That's why I said I am blessing every farmer who's keeping some cows, some goats and some sheep and some chickens and some fish pond. Let this year experience an overflow. I say experience an overflow so that you shall see an increase in the flocks that you are keeping because I bless you with the anointing of the great overflow of 2016. If you receive it, say amen. amen. Ah, I, Psalms 23, another overflow is the overflow that comes upon you despite what's happening in your life. This year, I tell you about this year of the great overflow, I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Ah, uh, tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you see me enter the valley of the shadow of death, don't, don't write me off. Don't laugh at me. Don't think I am finished. Because a righteous man may fall seven times, yet the Lord shall still lift him up. And I've come to declare to somebody here, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, don't be afraid because God has not left you. I declare you are still a child of God and you are still in the plans of God. And as a servant of God, I declare you are coming out of that valley and you are coming out better than you went in. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, Every time you enter a valley of the shadow of death, it is an indication that there is an overflow around the corner. I prophesy to everybody listening to my voice who is experiencing a valley of the shadow of death experience. I've come to prophesy there is an overflow just around the corner. That's what the Bible says in verse 5. What does it say in verse 5? He says, Lord, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm addressing your enemies who saw you enter a season of the valley of the shadow of death. And they started laughing at you. They don't know what they have just done. God shall prepare a table before them and they shall see you eat. I declare to those who laughed at you, they must keep quiet. They must come silence. They must apologize. When they see you eating at a table that God shall set for you in their prayer. And on the 10th of January, by the grace of God, we anointed your heads with oil. We anointed you for what? We, the Bible says you anoint my head with oil so that what? My cup someone's cup is overflowing this year someone's supply is overflowing this year somebody say amen. amen psalms are you still with me or did i lose you somewhere I, am i still you're still with me i say are you still with me the year of the overflow the year of the 
praise the name of the Lord. I say praise the name of the Lord. Let me get that. I'm in Psalms. Are you still with me? 119 verse 171. That's what I want. What does it say? This is another overflow. This one I'm catching up for those who, who missed what I, what I started teaching this. What does it say? My lips overflow with praise. For you teach me your decrees. See, when you begin to know the word of God, uh, show your neighbor your Bible. Come on, show your neighbor if you carried one. Some of you did not carry one. Usionyesho mulika muizi does not have a Bible. It must be a smartphone. Show your neighbor your Bible. Tell him, neighbor, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall read it, meditate on it, day and night. For then you shall make your way prosperous. And then you shall have good success. Tell them that is Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. See, when you start learning the word of God and the decrees of God and they begin to prosper your life and you start entering good success, then your lips shall begin to overflow with the praise at all times. And therefore, I declare this year, may God give you a reason to praise him in the morning, to praise him at the noontime, to praise him in the evening, to praise him at night, to praise him when you are going to bed, to praise him when you are rising up. Even when you dream this year, praise God in your dreams. Let your lips overflow with the praise of Jehovah. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you still with me? He says in Proverbs chapter 9, uh, sorry, chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. This is the last point from last time. What does it say? Honor. Are you ready with me? Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of your, as the overflow begins to come upon you this year. There are men and women listening to my voice. This year you shall honor the Lord with your substance. They are not on this side. Maybe try this side. You shall honor the Lord with your substance. Some of you shall write a check you have never written in your life. There's someone going to break a record of their tithe. As can I prophesy? As I look at this congregation right now, there are 15 millionaires here who shall write me a check of a million shillings each to finish this building. If you are the one, touch your neighbor, tell them Bishop is talking about me right there. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Set yourself a standard and say, Lord, I trust you. That's what I did myself. I said, Lord, I trust you that every Sunday when I go to the house of God, I shall not give less than a certain amount. That's what I do every Sunday. So I trust God for that money. Sometimes it comes to me on Saturday night. Because I said it, God honors my faith. And he supplies that money. And every Sunday morning, I don't give. I, there's a minimum. I said, God, I don't want to give a minimum. This would be the minimum every. I'm not telling you because I sense some jealousy in the house. Shindo, <laughs> you're One as for son. I don't want to mention my figure because it's not. It, I don't want to be dogmatic about it. But you, you put, set your own pace. You may say 200 shillings. You may say a hundred shillings. You may say a thousand. You may say five thousand. You may say ten thousand. Some of you may say, Lord, every Sunday, give me fifty thousand when I go to the house of God. If you start trusting God, our God shall do it for you. Somebody say amen. amen. Let that be your story. As you do that, verse 10, what does it say? And then, talk to me. Read with me what does it say? Then your bands will be filled to overflowing. Your vats will brim over with the new wine. Somebody say amen. amen. I say let it overflow over your life. I say let it overflow over your life. Amen. That which makes you merry. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm, I'm in the following verse now. Which one was it? Isaiah 28, 17. This is the other thing that shall overflow upon you this year. One as for a son. I thought we were reading together. I will make what? I talk, I'm talking about justice now. I'll make 
justice the measuring line, and righteousness the plumb line. Hail will sweep away your refuge. The lie and water will overflow over your hiding place. Now, the second part of this verse is talking to your enemies who have been making up lies to contend against you. There are people who have been contending against you unfairly. So they have been using lies. They have been hiding behind lies. God says, hail will sweep away your refuge where you are hiding and you are lie and water will overflow your hiding place because for the children of God justice shall overflow this year in the name of the Lord somebody say amen, amen. look at Amos chapter 5 and verse 24 is that the scripture I gave you what does it say read for me what does it say but let to not someone away but let justice roll on like a river righteousness like a never failing stream in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare an overflow of justice over the children of God. Uh, may those who contend against you unfairly be silenced by the justice of Jehovah. May their lives be exposed. May where they seek to scheme against you be exposed by the word of the living God. I declare they shall not prosper. Somebody say amen. Are you aware, child of God, there are people who are not blessed by your progress? Don't think everybody is happy when you progress. There are men and women when they see you progress, tumbo inawa katakata, matumbo inawa uma, usingizi inapotea because you are progressing. Are you understanding me, friends? When Israel was progressing, there was a man called Balak. He saw them coming and he was not happy. So the Bible says he went to look for a, a, a person called Balaam and he paid him a lot of money and he told him, I'm paying you so that you may curse Israel for me. I've come to address everybody who has paid some money and those who have been paid some money that they may curse you on behalf of somebody else. I am prophesying justice shall roll for you this year like a river so that those who are contending against you this year they shall be blown from their hiding place their lies against you shall be exposed those who wrote lies against you so that your promotion may not go forward those who lied to the seniors about you so that you cannot be given that promotion this year i declare let there be an overflow of justice on your behalf. Am I prophesying to the right people in this house? I declare let justice roll like a river on your behalf. Those who have filed cases even in the court and they are contending against you, but they are using lies, lying witnesses. I pray this, e this year, may the magistrate, may the judge listening to your case see through their lies see through their, their schemes and let justice be given to somebody in this house this year somebody say amen, amen. somebody say amen. amen that case that has been in the court for so many years i declare this year it shall be decided i i say it shall be decided in your favor in the name of jesus christ somebody say bishop he's talking about me right there because this year justice shall roll like a river it shall overflow on your behalf somebody say amen come on touch your neighbor tell him neighbor i told you my life will never ever be the same again those who have taken your land unfairly they're not on this side those who have taken your property unfairly they must surrender it this year. Those who are occupying a housement for you, they must surrender it this year. Those who are occupying an office meant for you, they must surrender it this year. Those who have been eating from your sweat unfairly this year, they must surrender it this year. 
justice shall roll like a river and righteousness like a stream which is unstop unstoppable on behalf of the children of God. Somebody say, I receive it. Somebody say, I receive it. Somebody say, I receive it. This is the year of justice to overflow on your behalf. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. I silence every voice that is being raised against you in judgment. Are we still together? Or did I leave you behind? You're still with me? Tell me for me, neighbor. This year, justice shall overflow. I'm in Joel chapter 2, verse 24. We are reading with what does it say? I thought we were reading together, three, four. You have, you have gone to school, all of you. What does it say? The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Wine talks about that one which makes you merry. Oil talks about anointing. With the anointing that I carry. Me, I'm declaring the great overflow for somebody here. I say with the anointing that I carry, that is flowing in this house, I pray that the anointing flowing upon me shall flow upon you also. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the threshing flow here, it's talking about your workplace. I say it's talking about your workplace. And therefore I declare, I say I declare, you shall receive an overflow where you are working. Whether you are selling tomatoes, or you are selling vegetables, or you are selling second-hand clothes, you are selling motor spares, you are selling services, I say you are selling food, or you are making hair, or you are doing law business, or you are doing medical business, this year with the anointing flowing upon this house, I declare, let there be an overflow. I say, let there be an overflow where you are working. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor for me, neighbor, I'm increasing my workers. Ah, uh, someone is getting customers. I say someone is getting customers more than you can handle. They are going to come patrons more than you can handle. They are going to get orders more than you can handle. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. That promotion that has failed to come for two, three years. I release it right now. Because promotion does not come from the east or does not come from the west. It comes from above. And with anointing from above, I release your promotion. I release the increase in your salary. May the year that the locust, I say may the year the locust and the kankawam has eaten out of your labor receive a restoration this year because you shall receive the former rain and the latter rain coming together am i in the right church me i'm, me, I'm blessing you he, tell whatever the, today you shall be blessed whether you like it or you don't like it whether you believe it you don't believe it as long as you're in this house you shall be blessed as long as you are here, today you shall be blessed. There is an anointing for blessing here. That's why I'm declaring. You shall see an overflow. If you're only selling one crate of tomatoes, this year you shall be selling three. You shall be selling four. In the name of Jesus. May customers locate your kiosk. May they locate your clothes. Somebody say amen. In fact, when you come out, when you come out of here, Go and talk to your wares. Go and talk to those tomatoes. Talk to those clothes. And tell them, you clothes, I did not buy you to stay here. I bought you to be sold. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. My prophet declared, you shall be sold today. Therefore, I call customers to locate my tomatoes. Locate my sukumawiki. Locate my spare parts. Locate my garage. In Jesus' name. And as you speak, in a, I'm in agreement with you right now. As you speak to your wares, as you speak to your goods, as you call your customers, I stand in agreement with you right now. This year, 
receive an overflow in the place where you are working in Jesus name somebody say amen, amen. your employer shall look at you favorably if Joseph was favored by Potiphar, may your employer look at you favorably this year. Somebody say amen. Come on, mini when you get pigia bana makofi amana. Bamana kaziako utabarikiwa. And that is why I decree from that mutumba business, you shall buy a house. From that tomato business, you shall educate your children. From that employment that you have. You shall take care of your mother. You shall take care of your father. You shall bless other members of your family from the work of your hands. Because this year, there shall be an overflow in the workplace. Mundo asidharau kazi yako. Hata kama ni mkokoteni, ifuto kisema, my prophet told me, I shall overflow from one mkokoteni to another mkokoteni. Before the end of the year, you shall have a pickup. Hata itakuwa, hata kama itakuwa ni KAC, ni itakuwa ni mwanzo of you becoming a car owner. By the end of next year, utakuwa na KCZ. Wanyamaze katika jina la mwa. Am I prophesying to somebody here? Overflow in the, in the workplace. I say overflow in your workplace. Tell you it is coming. Mwangalia mwingine mwambie it's coming. If you thought that was great, look at Zechariah. <laughs> Zechariah is even greater. What does it say? So man, I mean, what does it say? What is God telling me? God is telling you to proclaim some more. Eh? Proclaim? I'm telling you, child of God, proclaim, Father. Are you ready to proclaim? Are you ready to proclaim? What are we proclaiming? This is what the Lord Almighty says. What, what is he saying? My towns will again overflow with what? Prosper. My towns will again overflow with what? Prosperity. And the Lord will again comfort Zion and choose Jerusalem. This is our Zion. This is our Jerusalem. It doesn't matter whether you are a visitor or not. I declare from today, anybody entering this sanctuary, you are entering a prosperity zone. Me, I was sent to bless you. Now, yeah, some of you are, are getting shocked because you are looking at scripture wondering, did, is, is, am I quoting the Bible or not? Am I quoting the Bible? God says, proclaim father. Tangaza te? Ten. Even if you born among us, prosperity shall flow in my town, and it shall begin in your Jerusalem. It shall begin in your Zion, and therefore I declare: if you are sitting under this anointing, I, they're not getting me in this corner. I say, if you are sitting under this anointing, there's a, a, an anointing for prosperity that's coming upon your life right now. Oh, now na mambo ya me badilika. Things are changing for somebody. Things are changing for somebody here. As you enter this zone, as you enter this area, somebody say amen. amen. And from here, your village shall prosper. Your town shall prosper. Your father's house shall prosper. You shall be an agent of prosperity in your family. Somebody say amen. amen. Ah, shake your neighbor, tell him neighbor. You shall carry prosperity into your father's house into your mother's house into your village area ah murakazan talaba mirababa kayando li babozai mikazan toli mamozi kariba come on ask your neighbor what, what's the name of your village to tell them quickly tell them tell them nyagatogo tell them huisero tell them tell them the name of your village have you known the name of your village now to declare upon that village be, tell them upon that village because you come from there prosperity shall flow in that village because of you do you know about a village called Nazareth in Jerusalem in Israel do you know about it now 
Do you know when Jesus was born, the question they were asking, can anything good come out of? Now that Nazareth was a unknown, ignominious, to be ignored village until Jesus was born there. Now, the village you came from may not appear on Google Maps, but now that you have come from there and you are under this anointing, I'm sending you back. Come on, let's shake your hotel neighbor. Me. Say, man, don't. I come at that time, I'm being Me and Jesus shall put that village on the map of the world. Are you understand me, friends? We never knew about the Gatondo till Kenyatta came from there. Am I making sense? There are some villages in this country. Until someone comes from there, we don't know about them. And that's what I've come to declare. I, Zechariah says, proclaim, Father. This is what the Lord Almighty says. My towns, my villages, my county. Are you ready to declare? Tell them about my town. My village, my family shall again overflow with prosperity in Jesus' name. Lift up one finger and say, my father, my father, my father. 2016 is my year of the great overflow for me, my father's house, my village, my town. In Jesus' name. Come on, Pigia Bwana Makofi Amana. Make a joyful noise to the Lord this year. It's your year of the great overflow. You are a carrier of the great overflow. Somebody say amen. That's why I declare. Whether you know it, you don't know it. As long as you enter this place, you must prosper. I say you shall prosper. If you sit here, you shall prosper. If you are a part of this church, you shall prosper. Tell your neighbor, Jirani, whether you like it or you don't, this year, you must prosper. As long as you have come under this anointing, your life is changing. I declare your life is changing. I declare your life is changing. Yeah. Romans chapter 3. Chapter 5, sorry. Chapter 5, verse 15. What does it say? Soma kwasauti, but the gift is not like that. Shh, don't go quickly. The gift is the son of the living God, Jesus Christ. Are you understanding, friends? For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and everything was made by Him. Nothing was made without Him. Come on. Are you understanding me now? And the Word became flesh, and He dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. For the law came with Moses, but grace and truth came with Jesus Christ. That is the gift. Read now. Now, you, do you understand the gift? Now, now that you understand the gift is Jesus, read with a loud voice, but the gift is not like the trespass. For if they, many died by the trespass of the one man, that is Adam, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, do what? overflow to the many. In this house, this year, there shall be an overflowing of the grace of God. Let grace overflow upon everyone in this house. Somebody say amen. amen. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. What does it say? For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. If you are in this house, I pray that the grace of God that brings salvation shall appear to you. Bring you to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
whom to know is eternal life. Somebody say amen. amen. The grace we experience, first of all, the first most important thing that the grace of God brings is salvation of your soul. The forgiveness of your sin. The assurance of eternal life. I pray today, if you are in this house and you are not yet born again, may receive the word of God and may the grace of God that brings salvation that is overflowing in this house may it appear to you also and draw you today and bring you to the knowledge of Jesus whom to know is eternal life in Jesus name somebody say amen, amen. 45 years ago when I was a 17 year old young man that grace appeared to me a teenager in Nairobi, Kenya. And by that grace, I gave my life to Jesus on a Sunday afternoon, 18th of October, 1970. I said yes to the Son of the living God. And for 45 years, I've walked with him. He has kept me. He has sustained me by the power that is in that grace. That grace took me from sin. That grace has kept me up to now. That grace shall lead me home. Somebody say amen. And that grace is available to every person listening to my voice. If today you hear the voice of God, harden not your heart. For today is acceptable day. Today is a day of salvation. The grace of God that brings salvation is available in this house. Today I want to pray that that grace shall overflow to every person who's not yet born again and to every backslider come back to the king of kings come back to jesus he loves you the bible says if we say we have got no sin we deceive ourselves and we call him a liar but if we for confess and repent of our sin our god is just and is faithful he shall forgive us receive the forgiveness of your sins receive the remission of your sins because today in this house and every day there's an overflow i say there's an overflow i say there's an overflow of the grace of god somebody say amen, amen. joseph prince says under the law even the best person cannot be forgiven but under grace even the worst person can be forgiven it does not matter what you have done under this grace you are a candidate for the eternal life put your trust in him put your faith in him and receive forgiveness somebody say amen, amen. and furthermore tell your neighbor furthermore come on shake your neighbor wake them up tell them furthermore there's a grace ah in this house can i tell you the more graces in this house can I tell you more? There is a grace for healing. I say there is a grace for healing. I say there is a grace for healing. Receive your healing right now. I say receive your healing right now. If you come under this anointing, there is a grace for healing. Therefore, receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Can I tell you furthermore? Can I tell you furthermore? There is a grace for long life. I declare upon your life. I say I cancel the spirit of premature death. May you receive the grace for long life. May you live full life. May you see your children, your children's children, to the third generation. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, in deliverance church, there is a grace for finances. I release that, that grace upon you. Some of you are a bit shy. I say, I really, some of you are not even lifting up your head. You are shy to make your neighbor, that your neighbor thinks, you, even me, I need more money. <laughs> Lift up your say, money, 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 money. Locate me this year. Receive the grace for money to look for you. Let money locate you. Somebody say amen. This year, there's a grace on this house for international travel. There are some of you who shall meet in China. There are some of you who shall meet in India. 
There are some of you shall meet in South Africa. There are some of you shall meet in the UK. Some of you shall meet in the US. There are some of you shall meet in Australia. There is a grace for international travel. Receive it in Jesus' name. There are people thinking, I'm not going to kill you. No, I'm telling you, there's a grace on this house. One as for a son. There's a grace. There's a grace of buying your own house. There's a grace of buying your own shamba. I release that grace upon your life. I say, I release that grace upon your life. You shall not die a tenant. Me, I'm blessing you this morning. Somebody say amen. amen. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May every door that opens for me, amen. let it open for you also. Amen. May ev they are not receiving this. I say may every demon amen. that bows before me, amen. bow before you also. Amen. May everybody who does me favor, amen. do you favor also. I declare that the anointing flowing upon my life and the grace poured upon my life shall also flow upon your life. As a child of this home, I declare you are for signs and you are for wonders in Israel. You are signs and wonders, you are for signs and wonders in Kenya. Somebody say amen. amen. Therefore, I declare from today, may every spirit that fears me fear you also. May every door that opens for me open for you also. May every blessing coming upon my life come upon your life also. In the name of Jesus Christ and let it be so in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Why do you kiss again me and Mahali? Don't say my even me. I am going there. One as for son. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Let me give you the last one. Then we take a break. What is the last one? They were flowing of hope. That is verse 13. What does it say? So, so my what does it say? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with what? With the hope. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor, my hope shall not disappoint. Ah, come on. Look for a neighbor who looks like a believer, not that one. Look for another one who looks like a believer. And tell them, my hope shall not disappoint. Ah. You know, there's some hope that, there's some hope that disappoints. Are you aware? The most difficult person to comfort and console for me as a pastor and I've been a pastor for 40 years now, I'll tell you is a woman who has been expecting and she got a stillbirth she went into hospital she went into labor and her baby died and she says other women who came with me are living with babies what am I living with? Why? That is hope that has disappointed. You get the picture now? For nine months, she has shown off her belly. She has put up with the vomiting, the morning sickness. Come on. There are no mothers this corner. Maybe they are in this area here who understand what I'm talking about. She has had put up with the morning sickness, the vomiting, the spitting, the tiredness, the fatigue, the hot feet. But Bishop, you are a man, how do you know this? But I've lived with a woman who has been, sorry, praise God. <laughs> Mama Joy has carried five children, and I know I'm the one, number one, I have to say, 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 So I understand. But when you have gone through all that, the Bible says, when there's travail of childbirth, 
it is forgotten when a baby is hard to cry. And she says, you know what? I'm alive. And my baby is alive. After, even yesterday, I visited someone in the hospital who got a baby. They had a C-section day before yesterday. That's Michael Gutu's wife. They got a baby girl. But when we got there with my wife, we were surprised. She stood up to greet us. My wife was telling her, please sit down. She says, she's so excited. She's so happy. Why? Because hope has not disappointed her. You understand what I'm trying to say? And that's what this year I'm talking about. My, your hope shall not disappoint you. What you're hoping for shall come to pass. Because I know some of you, you are like Abraham. You are hoping against hope. Because your situation is what we call in English, hopeless. Abraham was a hundred years old. Married to a woman who was 90 years old. The facilities that God gave for childbearing had shut down in both of them. Yet God appears on the scene and tells them in hope. By this time next year, I tell you never I told you, my life will never be the same again. Because I come as the angel of the Lord to tell somebody in this house, I don't know what you've been going through, but I've come to tell you as long as you're still alive, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I've come to tell somebody, your season for weeping is coming to an end. Your season for joy is about to come in. Because hope is going to overflow in your heart. Somebody say yes. Hope declares and says, I know things are bad today. But as long as I'm still alive, they shall improve. They look difficult today. But as long as I'm still alive, they shall get better. Oh, the book of Job says there is a hope for a tree. Even when it has been cut down and only a stump remains in the soil. He says, yet at the scent of water, it shall sprout again. I've come to declare to somebody who has been cut off for a season, but you still remain in the house of God. You still are rooted in the word of God. Today, I bring a word of hope that shall bring water in your situation. I declare you are sprouting again. I say you are sprouting again. Your business is sprouting again. Your family is sprouting again. Your future is sprouting again. Oh, somebody say, neighbor, my hope is alive. And this year, I receive an overflow of hope. Somebody say, yes. Devil, you are a liar. And may God punish the devil and his mother-in-law who told you you shall never make it. I've come to declare as long as you are still alive, you are single now, but you shall get married. Ah, oh, I know. They tell you are childless, you shall become a mother. I've come to declare what they thought was dead in your life, as long as you are still alive, shall come back to life again. Oh, may hope overflow right now. I say may receive an overflow of hope right now. You are going to be employed again. You shall work again. You shall do business again. You shall sing again. You shall shout again. You shall dance again. Somebody say yes. Touch two people, tell them, neighbor, I will sing again. I will dance again. I will shout again. I'll come to the house of my God and bring, me, bring him a sacrifice again because the hope of God is overflowing in my life and that hope shall not disappoint. It shall come to pass as God has spoken. The Bible says you believe in God, you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, you shall prosper. I speak as a prophet over your life that the hope of God shall overflow over your life. Somebody touch your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, I don't know about you, 
but I receive the word from the prophet. I shall do the word from the prophet. And I believe in the name of the Lord. My hope shall not die. Come on, go ahead and celebrate the goodness of God in the land of the living. Celebrate the goodness of God in the land of the living. We come to give you hope today that today may be tough. Yesterday might have been bad, but tomorrow shall be better because God is still at work. Come on, put, shake your neighbor with them and tell them, neighbor, our God is still at work in my life. Tell him, neighbor, don't you write me off. God is still at work in my life. Tell him, neighbor, this situation that looks bad, I'm coming out of it. I'm coming out better. I'm coming out stronger. I'm coming out higher. I'm coming out stronger. I'm coming out healthier. I was sent to prophesy to somebody here whom the devil has wanted to put down, whom the devil has wanted to tell them you are finished. As long as you can hear my voice, hope tells me to tell you you are not finished. No, there's still hope for you. Things shall change for you. Things shall turn around for you. Oh, prophesy to your neighbor. Tell him, neighbor, I see myself not in the present. I see myself in the future. I see myself healthier. I see myself smarter. I see myself stronger. I see myself with more money than I have right now. Tell them, neighbor, I see myself not in the present, in the future, and I'm higher than where I am right now. And so shall it be. I declare and so shall it be. I declare and so shall it be. The devil is a liar. You are not going down. You are not dying in that situation. You are coming out of it. You are coming out better than you went in. A righteous man may fall seven times. Yet the Lord shall. May God lift some of you this morning. Tell them about the time of, my, of me being lifted up has come. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I say overflow of hope. Amen. I say overflow of hope. Amen. From this service, don't walk look, stooping down like a chicken that has been rained on. Tell your neighbor whatever your height. Look for a neighbor who looks like a believer. Tell him whatever your height. Square your shoulders. And walk tall. And eat life. With a large spoon. This is your year. Of the great overflow. Is Lord God spoken to you this morning? Then testify to your neighbor. Tell him neighbor. I told you, my life will never, ever be the same again. Ask them, do you believe it now? What are they telling you? Tell them, neighbor, take a selfie with me today. Because by this time, next week. You see, for Abraham, it was a one year turnaround. But for the people of Samaria, they were so hopeless. They were buying the dung of a pigeon to go and eat. Some of them ate ch ch their own children. That's hopeless, how hopeless they are. Until a prophet came and said, by this time tomorrow, I'm coming with a word for a 24-hour miracle for someone in this house. That by this time tomorrow, the condition you are in shall totally have changed for the better. I've just prophesied to somebody. By this time tomorrow, there's someone who shall ring my phone and tell me, Bishop, what you prophesied has come to pass by this time in 24 hours. Someone shall have a testimony. If you are the one, just turn around 360 degrees. 
and tell your neighbor it is over. It's over. I say it's over. I say it's over. I say it's over.